Hi there guys and welcome to the Geek Group. Today we're doing another in our series of equipment autopsies where we're taking apart um, in this particular autopsy is cabinet one from a 60,000 watt General Electric television transmitter. It was made in 1970 and is set up for channel 28. It was donated to us last week. And we want to use the cabinets for other stuff. And inside, they are just chock full of fabulous high voltage goodies. We've got Variax and fuses and contactors and high voltage switch gear and what appears to be a gigantic voltage divider and just all kinds of stuff. There's big capacitors down here and terminal blocks to just, it's great. All kinds of fun stuff. So follow along and we're going to take this apart and with the more interesting pieces we'll take them out. We'll put them on the slab, have a good look at them because we now have an actual real autopsy table for the equipment autopsy series. And yeah, we've got our tools laid out, we've got our bins, let's get to work. All right, now when doing an equipment autopsy, taking something apart to see how it works and collect useful components and parts from it, it's a good idea to have, a, have your thing that you're going to take apart, have a table to put stuff on separate from the main work area, have an area for all your basic tools. You're going to want simple stuff like pliers, a couple adjustable wrenches, just basic crescent wrenches are fine. Um, dikes are important, and by dikes I mean diagonal cutters. So we've got a compound pair, a big pair, a little itty bitty pair. I've got sizes one, two, and three Phillips head, an assortment of regular straight blade screwdrivers, and just some bins for putting things in, and this way everything can get sorted out. Um, one of the policies here at the Geek Group when we do an equipment autopsy on a big piece of equipment is we save every little nut and bolt that comes out of it and they all go into a bin. We don't worry about sorting them out at that stage. And then when we get a bin full of them and a boring afternoon with nothing to do, is somebody gets stuck with the job of sorting them out by size, which is not a fun job, but it saves us a ton of money on fasteners. So yeah, let's dig into this and get started. All right, so we're going to start out by just getting all the random loose stuff out of the bottom. We got a nice little ice cube relay. That's cool. And I'm going to grab a box, put it right there for putting things in. A couple little metal plates. Those are blank panels, it looks like. And that's it for just the random loose stuff in the bottom. Now, we've already gone through everything with the Jesus stick and made sure the capacitor was dead. So I can grab a convenient wrench and just take these off. This would, of course, be better with a socket wrench, but this is the quick and easy way to do it. So I'll set that aside. Now, when we take this capacitor out and store it, it's generally considered good form to put a grounding wire on it because capacitors can have a memory. I'm going to take this out so I can get out of the way. This appears to be a really big fuse. Um, it's either a fuse or a big resistor. It is a Weston model 985A, I think. Tubular resistor. Oh, it's a resistor. Um, and at the bottom it is labeled 1 milliamp max, 20 kilovolts max. And that's the closest thing I got on it. It's a Weston MFE206. And now you know everything about it that I do. So if anybody has any details on this, let me know. But we know it's a resistor, and it's easy enough to measure it out. And we know it's good for up to 20 kilovolts. So I'll just, I'll just set that aside right there for now. That's our, our first interesting piece. And now back to the capacitor. Every geek, every thinking human in the world should own a standard Swiss Army knife. Just You don't need one of the really whiz-bang ones, but everybody needs a Swiss Army knife. Carry it with you everywhere you go. You'll be amazed at how much you use it. Now, as far as multi-tools, personally I carry a Gerber. I've carried every brand of multi-tool that you can think of, and I have absolutely found Gerber to be the best without fail. Though there are people that will sing the praises of 
Sogs or Leatherman or the other brands, but I'm a Gerber guy. They also make great presents. I buy them for people frequently. We'll cut that wire off. I'm just going to keep these terminal plates right on the capacitor and I'm going to use them as washers. When putting a wire on a bolt terminal, put the wire clockwise around the terminal so that as you tighten it down it pulls the wire in. I have no idea what the voltage rating of this capacitor is, but by the looks of the insulators, uh, anything in the 20 kilovolt range or below would be perfectly reasonable. Maybe a little above, not a whole lot. So the next thing to do is to get these out. I need a socket that fits this, please and a really long extension. It's got to reach down this far. A lot of the wires in here are the old cloth insulated type wires, which are pretty cool. Um, I don't know if we're going to want to reuse these or not, but you can see they're cloth wire and they're bound with lacing with uh, wax twine. So we'll be careful taking these out and I'll actually wherever possible refrain from cutting any of these wires because they're they're neat and they're decorative and they're really useful in like steampunk projects and stuff like that so I'm gonna take the time usually we just cut these off in the terminal strips but I'm actually gonna take the time to cut all this off and pull these out individually and save them all it'll take a lot more time that way but this stuff's kinda hard to get nowadays so it's worth it This is an excellent example of real craftsmanship. Nobody does it this way anymore really because zip ties have just made it so much easier. But this is how it was done. And this is all one piece of twine that was laced in by hand by a guy who really knew what he was doing. So that's pretty cool. And it serves no purpose at all other than to clean this up and make it look good and, and keep things organized. That's the entire purpose of the wax twine. It doesn't serve an electrical function, really. All it does is lace the wires together and give you nice clean breakouts and makes it a lot easier to work on stuff when you can just look in there and know what goes where. So it's considered a good practice. If you're, if you're building a project, you want to make judicial use of zip ties or, if you're really motivated, lacing to keep things organized and keep them clean and you want to be able to just open up a box and look at it and things make sense. You just know that this wire goes down here and stuff like that and this goes over here and it just makes life easier. It makes it a lot easier, not just for you, but any other guy who may have to work on that. And this is especially important if you're working on a professional project where you may not be the person 10 years from now that comes and works on that. It might be some totally different guy. And you have a responsibility in, in craftsmanship to make his life easier. So think of this when you do your design and your engineering because some guy's going to have to work on that 10 years from now and you don't want him cursing your name any more than he probably is already going to be because you broke, you, you made something that broke. Do we have it? Hit me. I think that'll work just fine. All right, we've got our socket wrench and extension. It's a 9 sixteenths, but we needed a special one with a big, long extension to be able to get down behind the capacitor. And now I'm going to take these out. <laughs> 